We start today in Puerto Rico, where Frontier Airlines has just announced new routes without layovers. The airline is now expanding their operations with new routes in the west side of the island and in San Juan. Francis Felix reports. We interviewed the executive director of the tourism company, Carlos Mercado Santiago, who told us more details about the new routes between the states and Puerto Rico with Frontier Airlines. We're very excited uh, that Frontier is uh, betting on Puerto Rico and, and also that most importantly that it's not only in San Juan, so they are uh, beginning to have activities in Aguadilla. There, there's going to be a new flight from Aguadilla to Orlando from Frontier. Uh, that's going to be three times a week. They're starting in March of next year, and the economic impact that we are predicting, uh, projecting that the, that new route will have is going to be approximately $4 million. Also, uh, Frontier is expanding its operation in San Juan uh, with two new routes, uh, one to Hartford, Connecticut, and the other one to Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, the Boston is going to be four times a week, and the one to, uh, to Hartford is going to be three times a week. And we are projecting that it's going to have an economic impact impact of almost uh, 26 million dollars. So it's great news. Uh, we are having, uh, I think, uh, one of the most amazing comeback studies in uh, Puerto Rico. Uh, we are exceeding the uh, 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 capacity that we have in, tw in 2019, that it was our record year, for almost 50 to 20 percent. So this is something very uh, important and significant to the recovery of the island as a whole. Reporting from Old San Juan, Puerto Rico, Francis Felix. All right, thanks, Francis. We're switching gears now to the latest on the coronavirus front. Delta is surging and Omicron is spreading, already being detected in parts of the Caribbean. And health experts say the answer is vaccines. Brett Conway has new information on how the vaccines are faring against this latest variant. Omicron is a worry. You have to take it very seriously. The vulnerable people are the people who have not been vaccinated. For those who are vaccinated. You still are fairly highly protected against severe illness. So that's good. But even if you had two doses of vaccine, protection against mild illness isn't as good. Data is still coming in on vaccines versus the Omicron variant. For the two-dose Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine, a study from South Africa suggests it's 33% effective at preventing Omicron. But Dr. Anthony Fauci says a booster offers up to 75% protection against symptomatic infection. And that same South African study on Pfizer also showed vaccinated adults were less likely to be hospitalized. With Moderna, a U.S. study that hasn't been peer-reviewed yet suggests the two-dose vaccine's ability to neutralize Omicron was between 49 and 84 times lower than when it faced an earlier variant but a booster dose may substantially reduce this risk. Another U.S. study, also not peer-reviewed yet, reported the Omicron variant is markedly resistant to all three of the country's vaccines, including Johnson & Johnson's. Health experts say that's where boosters come in. Boost that immunity for at least a period of time because you're not going to be protected as well against mild illness over time. We have the tools to be able to blunt this. We just need to implement them. I'm Britt Conway reporting. In the meantime, the state of emergency in Antigua and Barbuda will be lifted on Christmas Eve. And with that will come the removal of the curfew. The Minister of Information, Melford Nicholas, announced on Thursday that after consultations with health and safety officials, Cabinet was satisfied that the state of emergency, which was put in place back in March of 2020, with the advent of COVID-19, could come to an end at midnight on December 23rd. However, he urged residents not to let their guard down. Minister Nicholas said the situation would continue to be closely monitored, particularly with the emergence of the new Omicron variant, and the decision to remove the state of emergency could be rolled back and other measures put in place. We do consider this as a conditional removal. We clearly wanted to um, send a clear signal that we wanted to reopen the economy, certainly beyond the Christmas holiday season and into the new year. Um, but we are cautious, we remain cautious because of the pending threat of the Omicron virus, which of course, the Omicron variant, I'm sorry, um, of course, uh, no one, uh, including the WHO, has all of the necessary studied information yet. So on the 24th, one second after midnight on the 23rd, 
the state of emergency will be lifted. Now, despite the removal of the state of emergency and the curfew, other restrictions will remain, including a 300-person limit on attendance at approved feats. In fact, Cabinet has added a further restriction on that one of that event will only be permitted on any given day. As of Thursday, there were 27 active cases in Antigua and Barbuda, 19 of which are locals and eight imported. Authorities said transmission of the virus is predominantly by locals. In the meantime, the COVID pandemic is devastating children's mental health. That's according to the president of a well-known pediatric association. And the group wants lawmakers to address the crisis now. Mandy Gaither reports. It's being called a national emergency, children and their mental health during the pandemic. I have heard pediatricians across the country who are, are very worried. The president of the American Academy of Pediatrics says doctors are seeing unprecedented numbers of kids with mental health issues. I had one pediatrician, I will always remember this, tell me that, that he has seen more children for anxiety than with ear infections in the past year. Hospitals across the country have seen a dramatic rise in the number of pediatric patients needing mental health care. For example, at Children's Hospital of Colorado, there's been a 75% increase in emergency department admissions for mental health problems compared to before the pandemic. Outpatient visits went from a three-week wait to nine months at times. If you can imagine being a parent with a child who has mental health needs, calling for support and basically being told, call us back in a year, the situation continues to be untenable for both us and the parents. Right now, there are two pieces of legislation in Congress to address the crisis. One would provide money to train more providers. The other would give grants to children's hospitals to beef up pediatric mental health services.